Praise the Lord. I thank the Lord for giving me this great opportunity to be sharing my heart with you all today. I know by his grace we are all doing well and I truly miss my living hope family from Mayur Vihar. On the occasion of the Praise the Lord. I thank the Lord for giving me this great opportunity to be sharing my heart with you all today. I know by his grace we are all doing well and I truly miss my living hope family from Mayur Vihar. On the occasion of the Mother's Day I would like to share with you all about a mother of steel from the Bible whom Jesus personally honored because of her prevailing undeterring faith. Who is this mother? She is nameless in the Bible, but found a place in two two of the Gospels. Wow, what a mother is she that she found such a profound position in the Gospels, the living Word of God. She is referred to as a Syrophoenician or a Canaanite woman. We read about her in Matthew fifteen twenty one to twenty eight and in Mark seven twenty four to thirty. Let's quickly read the portion in Matthew 15:21 to 28. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, crying out, "Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly." Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, "Send her away, for she keeps crying out after us." He answered, "I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel." The woman came and knelt before him. "Lord, help me," she said. He replied, "It's not right to have the children's bread and toss it to the dogs." Yes it is lord she said even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table then jesus said to her woman you have great faith your request is granted and her daughter was healed at that moment every time i read this portion i get transported to those times and i feel as if the whole anecdote is happening right in front of me that much it captivates my heart in this whole portion what immensely transfix or fascinates me is the behavior of jesus and the mother's perseverance it's such an irony that jesus wanted to have some time by himself and he chooses to withdraw to tyre and sidon which are not part of israel they are idolatrous towns in today's terminology towns which are which do not have christian population or which do not belong to a believing community i choose to believe that he went there just to see the faith in action of this non jewish in our days today a non christian's mother's faith in fact just before this portion jesus was having a debate with the pharisees in galilee on what comes out of a man actually defiles him and not what externally that the man consumes he clearly is saying external what this natural eye sees and feels does not matter it's your inner self what you are within matters to god setting this context he withdraws to stir and sidon the pharisees are offended because of this being rejected by his own people he is going to a foreign land to that to find that faith 
he could not find in israel which reju- which rejuvenated and must have motivated him for his purpose on this earth once he comes to tire he goes to a house and wants to keep his presence in the town a secret but this mother whose need and faith found the presence that can give the solution to her problem her little girl's deliverance she goes to jesus starts her historic dialogue with jesus she addresses him with his true title crying out lord son of david have mercy on me my daughter is demon possessed and suffering terribly this mother was totally focused on the resolution to the problem she had at hand the deliverance of her little girl she did not care who was listening to her problem even if the whole world knew what her do- that her daughter was demon possessed did not embarrass her she was focused she kept crying out loudly my imagination or thought is that it was very difficult for jesus to ignore her because she addressed him with his true heavenly title lord son of david every cell in him would have been yearning to meet her need immediately son of david is the messianic name of jesus which means he saves he delivers he is the savior whenever he was addressed as son of david by a person in need he definitely met that need we see that in the healing of blind bartimaeus but he is god and delights in seeing real faith in action he wants the very best in us to come out he pushes us prunes us and corners us only to bring out the very best he placed in us in hebrew 11:1 1, we read now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see and this mother displayed this very faith she had absolute confidence that what she hoped for the deliverance of her little daughter and she started seeing that even before it really happened that's why she could push on even though it seemed jesus is ignoring her pleas then we have the disciples who are beginning to feel uncomfortable because her pleas are becoming more persistent and more louder the more jesus is ignoring her her faith in the son of david seems to be surfacing all the more are we faced today with any such circumstance or situation when we pray for our children do we feel that god is ignoring our prayers and cries for our children do we feel disappointed when we do not see changes in our children in spite of our fasting prayers or like this gentile canaanite mother do we get all the more charged up and determined to get the answer from god dear mothers is it not time that we push on as we near the deliverance of our children the disciples start advocating for her like we have so many loving sisters and brothers in church our pastors and elders prayer partners who start praying for us and further strengthen the need for god to answer our prayers jesus seems to be quite blatant this time he does not even look at this mother but answers the disciples by saying that he sent for the lost sheep of israel sent for those pharisees and jews who rejected him outrightly we see that in the earlier verses of this chapter god is saying he is for those people who do not want him do we have such answers from god today when people in the church gather and pray for us and they come back and say that god will do such and such a thing for that christian and this christian because they come from a bloodline of christian ancestors but you are the first christian in your house it's harder for you to see god do something in your life the devil's hold upon your family is strong etc etc does this dampen your faith or do you know the son of david you are you are fixed your eyes on and not on the disciples or people around you who are advocating for you with god this mother did not even care she came forward 
closer to Jesus and eye to eye said, Lord, help me. What was Jesus' response? It is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. We will think this is heights, enough is enough. Immediately our pride would kick in. Our flesh will take precedence and we will become angry with God. But look at this humble mother who knows nothing except the assurance of her delivered child, which the son of David alone can give. I think the precious Holy Spirit stepped in here and responded on her behalf. Lord, she replied, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. This response must have just liquefied Jesus and in all his love and compassion said, For such a reply you may go. The demon has left your daughter. Wow! What an event that was captured in the Bible. It only takes God to bring out the best from us. He did this with Abraham also. He asked God, Abraham to sacrifice his only son and then, when Abraham is ready to do so, stops him and calls him the father of faith. He was silent a number of times when David in the book of Psalms was crying out to him and he says, David is a man after my own heart. He was even silent for few years when Hannah, year after year, kept on going to the temple and pouring out her heart to give her a child. He let Hannah go through humiliation, which led Hannah to know the value of the gift she got from God. And she gave the gift that is Samuel back to God, who turned him to be the greatest prophet in the history of mankind. So we as mothers today, let's keep on reading and rereading these life-giving passages from the Holy Scriptures and allow the Spirit of God to strengthen our faith to see our children as the prophets of today's and tomorrow's generation. May we, with the help of the Holy Spirit, like this Syrophoenician woman, mother, never ever give up till we see our children's destiny in Christ fulfilled. God will never ever send back any mother who comes to him empty-handed. He will just not only meet her need, but will fill her to the brim, overflowing so that she can go and be his pride and serve him all the days of her life and leave a legacy like the Canaanite mother, which will impact the next generation mothers. Let's bow down our heads in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time, O oh Father God. Lord, I thank you, Master, that you've chosen, O oh Father God, this empty vessel, O oh Father God. Lord, to share what you've put in my heart, O oh Lord. Lord, I bring all the mothers, O oh Father. Lord, believing, non-believing, who belongs to the fold, who does not belong to the fold, or whoever or whatever, nameless as, as they might be across the world, O oh Father, I bring every mother to your feet O oh father O oh father god including myself O oh father god lord fill us with your precious holy spirit O oh lord we need your spirit O oh father god to stand in the gap O oh father as this side of Phoenician woman stood O oh father god between her little girl deliverance and you O oh father god and never left you O oh father till you healed her daughter O oh master god Lord, I pray, O oh Father, that we as mothers, O oh Father God, be filled with such a spirit of supplication, O oh Father God, of grace, O oh Father God, that we will refuse, O oh Father God, to leave, O oh Father God, the throne of grace, O oh Master, till we see our children delivered, O oh Father God, and raised up, O oh Father God, as prophets to serve this generation, O oh Father God. Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we worship you, Lord, that you will lead us, guide us, O oh Master God. Lord, when you come, O oh Father God, Lord, on that great judgment day, O oh Father God, and when you present us, O oh Father God, holy, blameless, O oh Lord, Lord, you will, O oh Father God, and along with our children, lead us into that eternal kingdom and to have supper with you, O oh Father God. Lord, I believe in you. I thank you. I praise you. I worship you. 
Once again, O oh Lord, I cover myself and every mother or father with the precious blood of Jesus. And I pray this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you.